Yes, I'm coming from you to you live from the PMC uh, interrogation room here. So I will also, oh, well, I guess I'll share my screen. Okay, so thanks everyone for joining the uh, CMP committee as we're transitioning here. And um, let's see, why don't we go and just do some, some quick introductions. I know there's a lot of people who were just on the, uh, on the technical committee, but there's a few new people. So we'll, we'll do quick introductions. So if you wanna just, uh, if I, when I, I'll read down the uh, attendees and if you just wanna, you can come off mute and just uh, say your, your organization, that'd be great. Uh, so I'm Eileen Singleton with, with BMC. Uh, Regina? Hi, Regina Aris, Transportation Division, BMC. Thank you. Uh, Todd. Okay, not sure if Todd is staying, but he is our Transportation Division Director. Uh, David. Yep, David Cookson, Howard County Office Transportation. Thank you. Uh, Ed. Ed Stiltz with BMC. And can you hear me all right, Eileen? Yep. Loud okay, I and we had some technical trouble. We're good though. Okay, great. Yep. Uh, Keith. Yep, Keith Kacharek with uh, BMC. Thank you. Uh, Kwaku. Kwaku Dua with City of Annapolis. Thank you. Uh, Alex. Alex Rolls, Harford County. Thank you. Um, Angie. County, DPW and T. Thank you. Uh, Anna. Hi, everybody. I'm Anna Marshall with BMC. Thank you. Um, Bihoy. Uh, Bihoy, she from Maryland Department of Planning. Thank you. Uh, Brian. Uh, Anne Arundel County Office of Transportation. Thank you. Uh, Charlene. So Charlene Mingus is with BMC. Uh, we did David. Uh, Don. Don Halligan, BMC. Thank you. Uh, Dwight. Dwight Tigner, BMC. Thanks. Uh, Graham. Hey, Graham. Okay, Graham is with the uh, Baltimore City Office of Infrastructure. Um, Joel. Joel Gal, Hugh Harford County. Thank you. Let's see, uh, Luciano. Hi, Luciano Diaz, Baltimore City Department of Transportation. Thank you. Let's see, um, Michael. Michael, are you there? Or are you just going through the list of participants? Um, this I'm is Mike. Yep, Mike I'm just at uh, Strong Towns, Baltimore. I'm sorry. Yep, just having people introduce themselves. Uh, let's see, Kwaku, I think I think I already had you go, but you were out of out of order. Um, speak up if I'm not remembering correctly. Um, Mary. Mary Lane, Carroll County Planning. Thank you. Uh, Monica. Hi, Monica Haynes Benketa, Baltimore Metropolitan Council, Public Involvement Coordinator. Thank you. Um, Patrick. Patrick McMahon, M.MTA, Office of Planning. Thank you. Uh, Sarah. Sarah Gary. Sarah Gary, um, M.SHA, OPPE, Travel Forecasting and Analysis Division. Thank you. Uh, Steve. 
Cahoon. Good morning, Steve Cahoon, Queen Anne's County Department of Public Works. Great, thank you. Uh, Sean. Uh, Sean Kimberly, BMC. Great, uh, Travis. I'm sorry, I was distracted. I was I was paying attention to something else. I'm not sure what we're doing right this minute. Uh, just introducing yourself. Say what agency what agency you're from. Um, sure. I'm with the um, MTA, the um, <clears throat> um, Department of Planning, uh, as an intern. Okay. Thanks, uh, Victor. Victor Henry, BMC. Thank you, and Zach. Yes, Zach Hoffman, BMC. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I think I think we got everyone there. So thanks for joining. Um, so we have uh, this agenda today, and um, we'll have some updates on our our tools and talk about congestion management in uh, Resilience 2050, and kind of do a debrief on the priority letters and see what what might what we might want to do uh, differently next time. So kind of the objective and uh, what I show every time this is sort of the the flow what we've been doing for these CMP committee meetings and how they fit into the CTP um, flow and schedule. And you know if, if anyone ever feels like we should revise our meetings to better fit the CTP, you know, please, please speak up and, and we can, we can revise. Uh, so we're going to have um, Ed and, and Victor talk about some of our uh, CMP resources. Uh, so Ed, let's see, you are, you are up first. Okay, great. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about some of our uh, CMP uh, products. And first one we're going to discuss briefly is the uh, online CMP analysis tool, which is an ARC uh, GIS online based tool that we update annually. And it, it contains, among other things, the top 25 bottlenecks in the region, various performance measures, uh, priority letter projects, TIP and long range plan projects. And um, we recently updated things to the year 2021. 2022 data, which would bring us up to date in the annual schedule, uh, is expected to be available in June. I will double check with our GIS team on that, but it's basically ready except for a few minor things. Uh, we could advance the slide. And this is just a screenshot of what the tool looks like. Uh, you have the current data separated from older data for comparison purposes. You can select any of the layers and open up pop-up windows for the data, or you can open up uh, a, a spreadsheet attribute table, which would appear generally at the bottom of this. And um, we'd love to have any kind of input for any, those who haven't used the tool or, or who have been using the tool. And um, Eileen, am I okay to go into the uh, into the uh, congestion reports? Sure, sure. Let me know. Advance the slide. Um, this is this is the static reports that we do, the quarterly congestion analysis reports. We limit those to the top ten bottlenecks in the region because we provide a little bit of analysis and and quite a bit of graphics and and um, things like the monthly bottleneck comparisons. So anyway, what we've been doing here is we've been doing this report for several years. And you know, within the past year, we um, opened things up to this committee to get um, some suggestions. So we've expanded the analysis. Um, originally, that um, brought the report up to about 70 pages. And uh, recently, I've been working um, on uh, with the RIDIS Performance Users Group. And um, John Allen there from the University of Maryland CAT Lab came up with a lot of some templates to present this data in a clear format. Um, it's much more eye-popping, eye-catching. And it also brought things down to about 40 pages. So um, I think if we could advance the slide, please. This is just one page. This is the first bottleneck in, 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 in quarter one, just to give you a little taste of what's going on in Maryland 295 South. 
And you look in the map and we show the full extent of the bottleneck, which extends way back to, you know, past BWI airport. What we've done now, as you can see with, um, we've sectioned things off. We can see A and B locations, which are two of the locations where, where the bottlenecks occur. And in the top row going across, you can see the, the, the speeds and travel times. And the lower um, level with the graphics, there's a heat map which shows uh, the, um, the A uh, congestion, which is the, the morning period, and the B, which is where things are in the afternoon. Bottleneck occurrences, there's a pinwheel which shows at the beginning, the center of the pinwheel is the beginning of the quarter. And, and when you expand out, that takes you to the end. And this it shows you a nice um, look at the timing of, of where bottlenecks occur. And finally, on this page, uh, there is a, a speed map showing currently what it shows is the worst conditions um, of the bottleneck, which in this case is 5.30 p.m. What we're hoping to do in 2023 um, is make that an animated map so you can see a full 24 hour average over the quarter. And um, Eileen, I guess you can um, advance the slide. And um, that's really all I wanted to talk about. What we would hope is that you, you, know, you get a chance to look at both the online CMP tool and the quarterly congestion analysis reports. And I, I'd also like to mention, that's now a 40 page report, you know, sort of geared to planners. Um, what we're going to do um, as well, has come up with a you know, one to two page kind of an elevator report, a handout report that you just would basically show top 10 bottlenecks regionally. We can even show those, you know, by jurisdiction, you know, something for meetings and you know, like the handouts and, and for the press and that kind of thing. So um, if you um, would like to contact me, I'm very responsive by email because some of the questions we get can be more on the analytical side and that's that requires me to go to the cat lab um, to, you know, to get more technical information that you might require. So uh, that's all I have on my end. Um, if there's anything else, um, just you know, please feel free to get in contact with me. Thanks, Ed. Uh, anybody have any questions about what, uh, what Ed was talking about? Okay. Um, so what we wanted to do is just give uh, some uh, some update on a couple other tools that might be of interest to you all. So some of you may know about this, um, but Victor thought he'd give a, a quick overview of the Pedestrian Infrastructure Assessment Tool, or PIAP. Uh, so Victor, take it away. Thanks, Eileen. Um, before I start, I just wanted to uh, let every, uh, give some Props to um, the congestion management team, um, along with Zach's work with Resilience 2050. Um, the Federal Highway Administration has requested they, that um, our permission to use the um, CMP online tool and the quarterly reports as a premier example of how to do your job um, in the field in a course that they're generating for uh, TISMO. And uh, so, just wanted to mention that. Um, and so the, the, um, I wanted to give a quick update on the pedestrian infrastructure assessment tool as well. Uh, many of you were involved in the process of creating this, so I just want to thank you all. Um, and uh, BMC staff, including Charlene Mingus, um, Aaron Bolton, Regina, and myself worked with tool design to develop this ArcGIS uh, based desktop tool to help our member jurisdictions prioritize pedestrian projects, identify gaps in the network, and facilitate pedestrian planning in general. Uh, to support the tool, staff acquired a, a comprehensive sidewalk data set that includes every sidewalk in the region. Ecopia created this GIS layer by extracting the, the data from high resolution aerial photography using artificial intelligence algorithms. Um, the next slide, please. They're all so, so back in November, um, we had planners from Carroll County and Annapolis help us test the tool um. to provide feedback. Um, 
And in January, we rolled out the tool at a DPAG meeting. And then in February, we delivered the tool to all member jurisdictions with the manual instructions, instructional webinars and sidewalk inventory. So it's so far so good. Aaron has agreed to be the tech support for any questions anybody has. And um, if you have any questions about this tool or you want to figure out how to gain access to it, just send us an email and we will set you up. Eileen? Sorry. Uh, yes. I had uh, a visit. That's pretty much all I got. All right, technical difficulties, let me just, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so um, were there any questions on on the pedestrian uh, tool? It looks like it's, like it's um, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a question comment. Sure. Um, so I, I love the fact that this is being rolled out. Uh, this is this is fantastic. Um, and I'm wondering, has any thought been given, and maybe it's a little too early, uh, but has thought been given as to, you know, where it would go from here? Um, because I, I, I can imagine, you know, what I would love to see incorporated into the tool is something similar to um, uh, the level of comfort that we have for uh, bike infrastructure. Um, you know, not every sidewalk uh, is the same. You know, there, there's buffered sidewalks that um, you end up walking next to 45 mile per hour traffic that's poorly maintained with <clears throat> lots of uh, vegetation overgrowth. Um, and then you've got sidewalks that, you know, have a nice grassy buffer with, uh, with trees in between you and the traffic and, and what have you. So I, I'm wondering if there's any plans or thought you know, uh, uh, concepts for, for you know, uh, expanding on this to, to incorporate, you know, some kind of indications or metrics such as that. Right. Um, so some of the data that we have limits sort of like some, like the grade, we don't have the grade of the sidewalk. So that, that sort of is a limitation, but there are a lot of variables that are included in this software that um, will allow for the that feed into the prioritization toolbox, including you know opportunity, which is like grant funding, um, coincides with roadway improvement. There's um, constraints such as cost, and um, there's equity data. There's connectivity data. There's pedestrian trip potential. There's safety data with crashes, et cetera. So that's that that data supports the prioritization process module. Um, so there is some strengths there, but I can see that there is room for, um, you know, additional information that could present like a level of comfort type of, but, you know, we're, so, we're, so that's pretty much where we are right now, but we're open to suggestions to advance the tool. That sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, great. Thanks, Victor. Mm -hmm. um, so another tool that we were talking about internally that um, I'm not gonna go over, I just wanted to show you uh, a, a tool that's in the RIDIS uh, suite is a work zone dashboard. And this is kind of, this is what it looks like. And, you know, we were thinking if, if you all had interest in uh, having a presentation on it or and, and maybe getting access to it, we can work on that for the next meeting. Uh, so I don't know if anyone right now has has interest in uh, in something like this work zone dashboard that that shows like real time uh, real time delay and real time uh, uh, construction work zones. So if you have 
interest, if you think this would be something that you want to learn more about, let us let us know and, and we can look into getting, you know, seeing if you all can get access or, or you know, have a presentation by someone from the cat lab at a, at a future meeting. Hey, Arlene, David here. Okay. Yeah, I think this would be an interesting piece of information for folks. I mean, especially if you can sort of port it down to other members of public works as well. Um, and so they can use it as a resource in response to information I mean, question from the public. Okay. Uh, well, we can, I can follow up with, uh, with Cat Lab. We can, or, you know, Ed, Ed or I can follow up and, and look into getting you know, getting a more detailed presentation and, and seeing who all can get access to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff in, you know, in in British. They keep they keep pushing out new stuff. Okay. Any other thoughts about the about this? Uh, we also have we we showed you at the past meeting a uh, system performance dashboard that uh, Cambridge Systematics was working on the consultant and that will be I guess eventually posted on our web page I don't think it is yet and so we'll send the link to that uh, when that's when that's finalized I know I sent some uh, some iterations of it when it was on. Uh, Kind of hosted on on Charles's tableau, um, but eventually be on the BMC webpage. Uh, okay, so you know, as we go through, if anyone has any comments, any time, please uh, please uh, pipe up. Uh, so the next thing is talking about resilience twenty fifty, uh, but mostly mostly from the standpoint of how congestion management fits in. You know, I know, you know almost everyone has been uh, attending the technical committee meetings and is is aware of what's going on with Resilience 2050. So uh, Zach has some slides that that he was gonna go over, and so I think he'll he'll go over, but he'll do them pretty quickly. And for folks who, a couple of folks here who maybe aren't haven't been involved in Resilience 2050, uh, knowing what's going on, the slides will be available and. Certainly reach out to me or Zach, uh, Zach mostly, because he's the lead. Um, sure. but Zach, I'll turn it over to you and you can uh, you can run through your slides quickly uh, if you'd like. Sure. Uh, yeah, so most of you are familiar with this, so I will move rather quickly. But um, as you know, the LRTP addresses a 20 plus year planning horizon extending um, beyond the time frame covered by the TIP. We update it every four years. It's financially constrained, and the core is that list of major capital projects that we anticipate um, to be implemented over that period. Uh, you've uh, perhaps seen a number of resolutions along the way during the development process, starting with the goals and strategies, project scoring, demographic forecasts, and then we uh, adopted a financial forecast with the revenues anticipated to be available. Uh, so I included this for those that may be less familiar um, about uh, what the financial forecast looks like, has operating system preservation and expansion funds. Operating and system preservation are kind of large buckets of funding um, with fewer specific projects designated, although there are some system preservation projects in Resilience 2050, large scale projects. Most compete for that $12 billion bucket of expansion funding. Uh, you're, you've seen uh, the preferred alternative along the way, 98 projects were submitted. 92 projects were selected, all 36 transit projects, 56 of the 62 roadway projects based on scores, costs, and revenues available. Um, this is a breakdown of the expansion funding in the LRTP, uh, which I don't know if I've, I've shared that yet or not, um, but it's on the story map and in our materials. Um, a little bit more transit uh, than roadway in the front half of the plan, more roadway than transit in the back half of the plan, um, and in total about 41% transit, 58% roadway. Um, 
I've discussed the set aside funding before. This is money set aside directly from the expansion funding um, to support strategies intended to improve air quality. There's a TISMO element to that. Um, complete streets investments, strategies to reduce emissions, um, and also uh, include the full list of regional active transportation priority projects that were identified by BPEG in 2022. Uh, you're all familiar with the comment period as well. That extends through uh, Tuesday, June 20th. Um, we've had meetings, uh, a virtual meeting uh, and meetings in Carroll and Hartford counties, uh, meetings upcoming this week in Anne Arundel, Baltimore County, Queen Anne's County, and meetings next week in Baltimore City and in Howard County. Uh, we have a number of resources available, so if you're looking for more information on the documents, to download them, to comment, to learn about the meetings, to view a story map summarizing all, the, all of the documents, um, uh, we're guiding everyone to publicinput.com slash resilience2050. All right, uh, that's a very rapid fire intro, and now uh, Eileen can get to the CMP stuff. Thanks, Zach. And, um... Again, if anyone has any questions anytime, raise your hand. You probably have seen most of that before. Um, and uh, Zach's email is on here if you want to follow up with him. Uh, so I thought I would just try and highlight some of the congestion focused items in the uh, in the document. You know, I don't know if you all have have read it cover to cover. I certainly have not. Um, but Wanted to just make sure that you are aware of, you know, some of the congestion focused items. Uh, so in chapter five uh, is is where the uh, the performance measures uh, are are included, and these are the federal, including the federal performance measures and TPM three uh, transportation performance measures. The third bucket uh, includes traffic congestion and. Uh, so one of the uh, one of the items is annual per capita hours of peak hour excessive delay. Uh, so this is um, and this is a, a snip right from the from the plan, the draft plan. Uh, the targets are the same as as the MDOT targets for the metropolitan area, uh, and the the targets are focused on the urbanized areas. So in Aberdeen, up in this green area, and then the Baltimore urbanized area in this orangey area. Uh, so that's that's on page 17. If you're interested in looking at that, uh, there's the percentage of non-single occupancy travel on page 19. Again, these targets are the same as the MDOT targets uh, for the metropolitan area. Um, so just letting you know that. So and the, the targets are for the TPM three. Uh, those targets are for are two and four year targets, so they're they're short term, but they get included in our in our long range plan. Uh, and uh, the third chunk uh, is the travel time reliability performance measures. And uh, I'm not. I think these might be different from from the the state. They're uh, the so the level of travel time reliability and for interstate and non interstate, and you all. Probably remember you know, from the technical committee looking at the resolution and, and how this was calculated, uh, taking out the the 2020 uh, measure, the 2020 data and and trying to come up with something that would be uh, realistic for the 2023 and 2025 targets. So just I just wanted to kind of make sure you knew that that was included in our in our long range plan. Um, and uh, also from, from chapter five, uh, talking about some of the uh, CMP strategies that are included in the projects. And uh, of the 92 projects, you know, there, are, there were strategies identified when we did our CMP consultant study several years ago. And so in submitting projects, uh, the submitters need to identify the CMP uh, related strategies that are included. So demand management strategies, 33% of all projects. Uh, 
anticipate to include demand management uh, for transportation system management operations. 50% uh, of all projects are anticipated to incorporate TISMO strategies, uh, and there's breakdowns of, of roadway and, and transit, uh, public transportation strategies, 46%, public uh, bicycle and pedestrian and micro mobility, 68% of all projects, uh, and roadway, road capacity strategies, 80%. Uh, so there, there are a lot of, of non-expansion non strategies included in these projects that are being submitted in, in the long range plan. Uh, and, and also taken from the long range plan that we're, we're beginning to track the CMP strategies uh, across the TIP projects as well and, and trying to start looking at as projects move from the long range plan, uh, how are, are, the, um, are the CMP strategies moving as well and trying to start getting a handle on that. And, and Zach, certainly pipe up if I'm saying anything wrong or you want to add something. Uh, so in Appendix D, that title is Congestion Management. And um, so there are, uh, back in November of 2021, there were uh, strategies uh, approved under the goal of increasing mobility and uh, so there are a, a number of, of strategies, uh, performance-based planning and programming, TISMO strategies, analyze congestion causes and mitigation strategies, uh, consider how all modes work together, uh, supporting the multimodal freight network, uh, looking at traffic and transit system management and operations techniques, uh, sharing information across agencies and modes, uh, and responding to incidents uh, and managing incidents and sharing information with travelers, uh, developing and supporting the long distance bikeway network uh, and, and some other strategies as well. And so overall Appendix D sort of walks through the process of uh, the congestion management process like we did when we had our um, consultant project. And you know, so I just wanted to make sure you're aware that our long range plan is, is looking at uh, CMP and, and incorporating uh, these, these projects. So uh, again, in, in the congestion management appendix D, it does highlight the specific CMP strategies that, were, that are included in the preferred alternative projects. And those are listed here. Uh, and, and also I note that um, the CMP committee we get a little shout out in the in the long range plan as well. So thanks, Zach. Um, of course. So that was that was all I had on that. I don't know if anyone has any comments or or thoughts on uh, the you know the linkage between the long range plan and what we're doing here. Uh, but I just thought it made sense to bring that into our meeting today, and you know because the. It's the review period for the long range plan. So just make sure that everyone's aware of what's in there. Okay. Um, I, I do have a comment or okay. if, if, if it's possible. So I, I'm, I'm Mike Sapanic um, from Strong Towns, Baltimore. Uh, so I, I just find it noteworthy that the long train, the, the R, LRTP uh, in general and the congestion management section specifically that it makes no mention of uh mention of or acknowledgement of the phenomenon of, of induced demand um given that so much of the of the lrtp is focused on roadway expansion I, I know not all of it but a lot of it is focused on roadway expansion and and that the phenomenon of induced demand is i believe uh, well known and well proven it, it just seems to me that this that this disconnect needs to be addressed somehow. I mean, granted, the content of the congestion management section and the appendix, which, which I, I've read, um, it speaks primarily to non-expansion strategies and, and, a, and a simple scan of the uh, the likely congestion management strategies table. It yields repeated mentions of great non-expansion strategies such as TISMO and public transportation and bike ped 
and micromobility, et cetera. Uh, but that same table, it also makes frequent mention of roadway changes, parentheses, new lanes. Uh, so, you know, it's just, I, I find the framing used in the congestion management sent section and especially ap the appendix, uh, it's just a bit frustrating. Uh, early on in the LRTP where the preferred alternative roadway projects are listed, uh, for I think by my count, for 28 of the 47 roadway expansion projects, and that's 60% that's of them, the project description leads with the statement, widen from X to Y lanes. Like that's the lead, that, that's what the descriptions lead with. In contrast, those project descriptions mention things like bike ped improvements and accommodations, quote, you know, within project limits. And that's only at the end of those descriptions. So those strategies seem to come across as add-ons and secondary. And this kind of really makes clear, at least to me, what the primary congestion management strategy really is. And that seems to be more lanes. So I, I'd really like to see the BRTB um, and maybe this group in particular uh, provide some kind of clear, prominent explanation in the, in the long range plan of, of how they believe the preferred alternatives, lean adding roadway expansion projects won't result in induced demand. I, I don't know if that concept really gets much play amongst the members here, if that's something that's discredited in some way, uh, but I, I'd really like to see that addressed. Uh, it, it, amongst the circles that I'm in, it's very much a real thing. So I don't understand how it can really not be mentioned at all. And that, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna, I see Zach is off mute and so I'm gonna let him answer. <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, I think that's a good point, and I think we probably could do more, well, certainly could do more to discuss that concept and kind of look at that. Um, in, in regards to the descriptions, I will say that, I mean, this is a, a fairly minor point among your larger point, but it, it wasn't necessarily intended to um, highlight or denote that widening is the most important thing, but is uh, certainly the most expensive component of those projects. So I think um, that that's how we um, decided to have the widening portion first. It's, it wasn't meant as a prioritization. And I think you do see that there are a number of other strategies that project sponsors have increasingly incorporated into those projects, large percentages of those other strategies. But you're right that, that um, widening is a significant component and the most significant cost component of a lot of a lot of those roadway projects. Thank you, Zach. Yep. Zach, and thanks, Mike, for your comment. And um, you know, it's good for, for this committee to think about and you know, moving forward, you know, figure out what kind of what role you know we can we can play to incorporate those non-expansion, the non-expansion focus. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I'm hoping that this this part will be more of a discussion, uh, more of a discussion-based topic. Uh, so last year was the first time that we uh, tried to get regional priority letter text into the priority letters. And uh, so uh, so last year I have the, I updated the the summary. Last year we had quite a few jurisdictions that included the full regional text in their priority letters. Uh, and you know some included partial text uh, and some had, uh, references the region I have. This is uh, it's kind of a duplicate. References the region and regional text not included. That's kind of the same for 22. Uh, and for 2023, I looked at the priority letters. And so, and just a note, I didn't see Queen Anne's yet, so that's why they're not on here. 
Um, but it looked like there was it maybe there you know there was a lot of references to regional uh, regional impacts and and coordination. Um, you know the the text wasn't wasn't it wasn't used kind of verbatim in uh, in about half the the priority letters and about half of them did put it in half of you put it in. So um, I just wanted to kind of throw it out there and see how what what your thoughts are for how this process went um what you know do, do we want to try and do a similar thing next year you know i know that at the state level there was there may be some changes to how the cdp process goes and maybe there will be some sort of regional component but i don't i don't know that that's been developed yet uh, but i just wanted to get your thoughts um you know the you know, and anyone on how how this priority letter process went? Uh, does it make sense to keep incorporating kind of regional text, or we should take a different different approach? Um, so, David, did you have something? Yeah, I would strongly support. You know, we continue doing this. I think it's it was helpful for us. It was helpful for us to also think in terms of the region as well, and not be that parochial in our in our asks as well, since we are going and asking, you know, for large projects and large state participation. So having that regional language, I think, is really helpful, um, both in the letter and in guiding our thinking in terms of um, referencing our that uh, that regional language in the letter as well. So that's Howard County's perspective on. Uh, on this. Great. Well, thank you. That's good to hear. Um, you know, and, and the the priority letter text didn't change much from last year to this year. Uh, so, you know, if there are comments on just how it might, how we can change the 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 regional text or the introductory, the few introductory paragraphs, um, you know, certainly be interested in hearing. You know, getting any input on that, but I'm glad that it's helpful. And I, you know, I was thinking that even even if the text doesn't get included in the priority letter, that just having having the text floating around maybe helps think more regionally. This is uh, Steve Cahoon with Queen Anne's County, and uh, we did include it in our priority letter this year. And um, I agree with David. I think it's a good idea to continue it. You know, if we want to. Um, you know, reconsider and tweak it a little bit. That's, you know, but I, I do agree that uh, having it in our priority letters um, shows that we're uh, working together, um, looking at the same things. We are knowledgeable what's going on in the other jurisdictions and what's going on in the region. And, um, we, you know, I, I, I think it's very, um, you know, sends a good message to MDOT that um, we are working together. We do know what's um going on in the region and we do support it as a whole. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I just um you know, I I just checked the uh online the where they where the priority letters are posted and I guess Queen Anne's just hadn't made it up there yet. So good to know that you included it. Thank you. No, I just emailed it to you. So oh okay. I, I, I'm just a little late. <laughs> so thank yeah. you. Thanks. Hey Alinka I have a question. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, this is my first time to hear that uh, we have a regional priority letter. I is that the letter posted on your website? No. Well, there's so there's not a regional priority letter. There's some some text. There's about three paragraphs of text that um, were developed last year that was sent out to the jurisdictions and. Um, at we and the jurisdictions were asked to include in priority letters. I got you. Thank you. Right. So there had there has been talk of some kind of regional component for the CTP up up higher levels than than me, you know, like Secretary of MDOT and and uh, from some of the transit working group output that was came out of the BMC work. Um, not associated with this committee, so I don't know. I don't know if anything is going to come of that, 
um, but we just were trying to reflect a regional, uh, a regional component in the local letters. I got you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, I can also. Irene. Oh yeah, go ahead, Al. So, sorry. Um, is there is there a place where the is there a map or a graphic that that will identify you know when you list corridors one, two, three, you know, we we do include it in our letter. Mm -hmm. uh, we did include it this year in our letter, but um, just in terms of, of a graphic, we, we didn't include any type of, of graphic. Um, the, the TISMO corridors? Yeah, so I, I think, mm -hmm. I, I personally, I think it would be helpful if, you know, when, if, if there was a graphic um, and it may be, maybe it was shared, but if we could have a copy of the graphic, that way we could incorporate it in our letter next year so that when you're reading the, the letter and you see those numbers, you know where, where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I, I have, the, the committee has seen that, but that's a good idea to include it with the regional text so it's all right there. Um, yeah, whether it's a TISMO whether it's the TISMO corridors or the original transit plan uh, corridors one and six and 16 and 17, it, it would just be helpful. Thanks. Okay. And, um, you know, I know that Hartford County of, from, of our jurisdictions, I think Hartford County is the only one that includes uh, maps, you know, a little site map for each of the projects. So, um, so that might be especially helpful. Um, so yeah, that's a good idea. I can get the the transit corridor and the Tismo corridors, and uh, I know that the the regional transit corridor. I think that's on the online tool. I don't remember if the Tismo corridors are on there, um, but we can. But I can just add that as a as part of the the text for the for the letters. Thanks. And I guess I'll also throw out a question, of, you know, not only about the, the regional text, but, uh, you know, the online tool and, and you know, the, the resources that we've provided, if, if those have been helpful, if you have any requests for other, uh, other information to be included, I, I'll look, like I said, I, I don't think that the TISMO corridors are on the online tool, but maybe that's something that we can include. Um, uh, you know, if there's and if there's other other kinds of data or information that would be helpful. Or, um, you know, and also another thing to think about is, is there interest in a, a different, another meeting, a different meeting? Um, let's see, just going back to, all the way back to the beginning. Um, you know, so our next CMP committee will be in November. And, uh, you know, so there's, so the question, you know, is there interest in having an interim meeting where it's not maybe an official committee, but kind of a work session where the group can get together and talk about potential projects or anything? Um, you know, any anything that that our committee can do to help support the development of the of your priority letters. So any other thoughts on that? Eileen, I would like to participate in any kind of project concept development meeting. Trial forecasting could definitely help out with that. We have several, you know, off the shelf, shelf projects that we've developed. So um, just let me know. I can help. Thank you. Speaking to the regionalism, you know, uh, I think one of the examples of the bottleneck was 295, but, you know, and to the point of um, looking at regional solutions and not just widening a, a particular corridor, if we could do some like regional O and D stuff, and that way, you know, we can look at travel patterns generally that way you know if 295 
would be helped by increased rail frequency or adding the you know high speed rail or or you know what I mean like or improvements to other facilities or other you know transit corridors or whatever you know is two ninety five because they're going to Fort Meade or is there you know spillover from I ninety five you know that kind of thing. Um, if we could figure out some kind of way to look at O and D regionally, that way we can see the big facilities are affected or improved by regional projects. I don't know how we can best do that. Um, and if that's something we could use RITUS for, I know there was a, a O and D tool that they're kind of like got a draft or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if that's something we could look at as a group. Yeah, I think I think we can, and and I think Ritis has you know a a tool. I think what we'd have to look at what um, what data is available, and depending on what kind of study we'd want to do, uh, we we may need to purchase some data. Um, but I think the I think the tool is there to uh, to um, you know evaluate it. But we can we could look into that. I don't know. Yeah, I know we have BMC has a lot of consultant projects going, but I don't know if there's an OD uh, an OD study. But that's something that we can look into. Uh, uh, you know, some kind of a regional thing. Okay. Thanks. Any other thoughts? Back to where we were. Let's see. Okay. So I did have so that so this was the um, so Behoy, if you want to see. So this is the um, I had some short introduction to regional text and then um, the regional regional text that was sent to the jurisdictions. Yeah, I see it, thank you. Um, and I'll, I'll send out the, uh, the handout so that you can all, you can see that. And um, right, so we can look at including maps that show the, the corridor locations and the, the TISMO system corridors to help, uh, to help put everything in one place. Yeah, that was all. Any other thoughts on the priority letter or kind of looking more broadly, you know, how, uh, what else we want to do with this, with this committee, we can look at the, at the next meeting, uh, looking at the work zone dashboard. But if anyone has any other ideas or, or thoughts on how we can best best use this committee? You know, let let me know anytime. Okay. Well, so moving on to other business, uh, we still we still don't have chair. If anyone's interested, let me know. Um, I'll do the. Work with you on the agendas, do the minutes still. Uh, our next meeting is November 7th. And uh, again, that'll be after the uh, technical committee. And let's see, I think that that is all I had. So I will see, does anybody else have any anything to share about congestion management? Okay. Well, I appreciate everyone uh, attending the meeting and providing input. It was it was helpful. And um, have a good summer and see you in November. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you all.